Gilbert is a fatty. Gilbert is a fatty. <laughs> Didn't see that turn. <laughs> you and me, we live in harmony. Gilbert, Gilbert is, is a, a fatty. I'm not. Oh, that's not when you come in. When do I come in? You just, you know, you're squish fat around fat. your body. Oh, yeah, okay, squish, it. squish it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go over top. <laughs> like that. Okay. You and me, we live in harmony. Gilbert is a fatty. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I like it. Welcome to Tiger Belly. Um, we got Georgetown, USA here. We got Gilgil. We got Kalila. And uh, no guests tonight. Um, it's fine. I like it that way sometimes. And uh, I, just, I want to start off by saying uh, what happened to me yesterday. Yesterday, um, I had to do a show on Comedy Central called The Goddamn Comedy Jam. Basically, what it is is comedians, um, they tell a little story about a song that they like. And then they sing the song with a full band in back of them. Mm -hmm. And um, I was probably one of the last people asked to do it because I think they were trying to get bigger people. They got pretty big people, though. Last, so here's the deal, all right? It was me, Sarah Tiana, mm -hmm. uh, Colton Dunn, who's on Superstore. Superstore, but he also was a writer on Mad, um, Chris Hardwick, oh. and Fortune Feimster. And the biggest note that I had from Comedy Central, and the only note was, do not show your dick. Can't say that to Bobby Lee. That's literally <laughs> the <laughs> note from the top of Comedy Central. Please, all week, do not show your dick. Oh, specific to you? Yeah, no, it wasn't just. To, it was just specifically to me. Yeah. In fact, they would keep bringing it out, bringing it up, like, hey, just remind you, you can't show your dick. And I go, all right. <laughs> got it. I, I got it. You know. Heard you. And don't, so don't kill the surprise. Do I'm not gonna show. Yeah, I'm not gonna show the tell the, kill the surprise. <laughs> well, so I, I show up and number one, it's a pretty pretty big deal. A lot of pressure because, you know, it's uh, a new series. They're putting a lot of money into it, and the the money that I got was pretty good. I'm not gonna say what it is, but for a one show on Comedy Central, it's like the most amount. That I ever been paid for something, and I'm thinking to myself, "What the fuck? This is easy. It's not easy money because I had to do days of singing lessons. Oh, you took lessons. Oh, I had a vo voice coach. Well, after they heard, well, they heard, after they heard me, <laughs> they were like, "Wait, we need to yeah, get they heard me Tuesday coach. at a rehearsal, and they and they were like, I was started singing, and, and you can t see them, everyone huddling around, going, "What the fuck do we do? We can't fire him." So they go, "You need to get take a voice coach." It was me and Marion Lynn Rice Cub that had to take a voice coach. I think she volunteered. She wasn't forced. I was forced to. Oh. I, I watched the show and I watched all the performers go up. Yeah. And I I feel like it was unfair to you. It was so, so ch No, let me finish though. So this is what happened. <laughs> so I show up and I'm last. Mm -hmm. So they all go up and then the last, the two before me was um, Tiffany Haddish. Mm-hmm. She's on um, the Gerard My Car Carmichael show, but she's also extremely talented. Like she is so confident about her comedy abilities and as a singer. And she went up in front of this packed fucking theater and she rocked the fucking house. Standing ovation. Oh, damn. Right? Yeah. Standing out. You follow it that? Was no, 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 no. And then so I, it was like 10. I, I started sweating because I was like, <laughs> Oh, because you knew he Bob had to go there. after her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So that, so she goes up there, and I'm sweating backstage. Yeah. And I, 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 I turned to Colton Dunn. I go, I, I made a mistake. <laughs> I should have done it. You know, he's like, you'll be fine. But I go, well, Chris Hardwick's going up. I don't know if he's a singer. No. He goes up there, tells a very funny story, and then he, I, he, he goes, he goes, he starts talking about something, and then all of a sudden I hear. And he, he's going to play with me. What, what's yeah, it? Don't say his name, though. Why? But it was a special guest. He brought in like a real rock star. Damn a it. real rock star. So he brought someone to and help he, him. And he had an assist. An assist. But not only did he have an assist, I did not know he, that well, Chris Hardwick can fucking sing. He can sing, too. Sings too. Right? So that's already two for two for Two for two, right? And not only that. Like, he would have made it as a the, rock star. The guy, that, the guy that did it with him. Was the guy that wrote the song? Well, that's already <laughs> yeah. that's a home run, <laughs> right? So and here's they're little up, Bobby, and I'm in the back going, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. 
Because I tell myself the story part, I thought I crushed it. I mean, she doesn't mm. think so, but because you didn't tell the story, I wrote. doesn't matter. You wrote. She wrote my story. Yeah, and like not I, a single word. It doesn't matter. But I, I did I not get laughs? No, because you did your part of your act. That's in the fine. Beginning. I don't give a fuck because I had to survive. Damn. And I want to every anyone that's a Tiger Belly fan, when it push comes to shove and you're up against the wall, Papa survives. Mm, Papa. Yeah. And I'm I'm gonna live. So now I'm into the song. Okay. It's going okay. I think it's going okay. Mm-hmm. You do not. You think so? The singing part. How many days did you have to rehearse? Two. Just do you do, do, you don't like the singing part? Well, I I thought that for on for your level, yeah, you did great. Okay, well that's you and exceeded. When she, and she, when she says shit for like your that, level. at my level, <laughs> but you were doing some really desperate moves that I thought was for sure gonna you know get you in a stretcher because Jeez. you were doing some like joint like actual <laughs> arthritic joint popping because yeah, i yeah. think that you were so intimidated by chris hardwick and and tiffany haddish yeah. that you were doing some offbeat shit like you were doing a leg drag across stage yeah like, i did a leg drag it was as if like it was as if like his actual like yeah. hip yeah. bone disjointed from his like pelvis and he was doing like some weird yeah, leg and my body was like saying and i could feel like going <laughs> you gotta do something it wasn't a mental thing. My body was survival going. Survival mode. His yeah, survival. Was right. So confusing. Oh my god, I did some crazy weird. It got shit. laughs though. I don't know. It got something. It got something. <laughs> and then, so then, next thing I know, my dick's out. Oh my <laughs> yeah. god. I mean, I I don't know what happened, but I my pants were down, and my and I was only gonna do it for a split second at the end, like a flash. So this is the end. So I'm just gonna flash my dick. Yeah. The song kept going. It wasn't over. It wasn't the over. Song the song ended. wasn't over. So now my dick's out. The song's not over. So now I start swaying back and forth. <laughs> you know what I mean? With my dick out, right? And in my head, I'm going, this is it. This is the last thing you do for Comedy Central. <laughs> you enjoy it. And so now, and then, and the song ends, and I'm not even, I don't even leave where you're, I could have, you didn't see me. I could have died. What do you mean you could have died? Because you're supposed to leave stage, ba- the back door, whatever, the mm-hmm. entrances or whatever. I don't know where it is because I'm naked. My dick is out. So I hop over the st- actual <laughs> stage and there's pipes and spikes sticking out of it. Bobby, what do you do? Yeah, I know. So my dick could have fucking fell off. So then I still have the mic in my hand and I wander downstairs thinking that, right? And the first guy I see is Chris Hardwork. He's like, Wow. <laughs> I go, what do you mean? He goes, just wow. And I go back, I give the mic, and the, then I get a text from the executives oh, no. on my phone. And they go, wow, your dick looks really bigger on TV. <laughs> from the executives? Yeah, one of the executives. And then I went upstairs to see everybody, and they all were totally fine with it. Oh. It was amazing. But the crowd might have not been. Like, I, I actually saw a woman clutch her pearls. Now, after a collective gasp and you look around, there was a woman in the corner just like, <gasps> like yeah, this. Yeah. She was so frightened. It's not fair because Fortune Feimster used Natalie. What's her name? <coughs> Natalie. Are you okay? Are you supposed to give this stuff away? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's going to oh. air soon, right? They, he, uh, they already texted. They Instagrammed it already. Oh, oh they did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or did you? No, it was. No, they already Instagrammed it. Oh, okay. Just don't, What's her name? What's her name? I just don't give it away The Dixie anymore. Six Lady, Natalie, something. There were some performers So she there. brought country stars. She, she brought a country song that wrote the song. Chris brought a rock star. And then the black ones, like Colton and Tiffany, doesn't count. Why? Because they could just, uh, they already know how. Oh, great singers. I mean. Was that racist? No. Tiff- Who are you trying to bring? Nobody. Nobody wanted to do it with me. Did you ask? No. Oh. I could barely get the Rod Stewart to even use my song. There That's why I got it because she had to write a letter. That's right. She wrote a letter, dear Mr. Rod Stewart, Stewart you know, and, and then because of her letter, he approved it. But anyway, I mean, it, you know, everybody could sing, but Bobby, like you could tell, they had some actual chops. I, you think, you really think that Col- uh, um, that Fortune Feimster sang better than me? Is she a real singer? But her story was so strong. I know, but do you think her singing was better? Oh, uh, it was fair. I think it was probably on par with you, actually. Okay, but well, she had brought in a rock star. She didn't assist. Same, when you say, I thought my th- that everyone thought oh, my singing was good. I'm just trying to be like an honest voice. Yeah, she's the worst. <laughs> she's so <laughs> not. Yeah, I, honestly, like, you know, I want her there always. And I said, because she was sick all week. So I go, you have to go. 
Mm -hmm. I'm sick. And then when she shows up, she's so critical that even if I thought, I thought I did a great job. I was like feeling high off of it. Like I was like, oh my God, I survived that. Because people like were like complimenting me, but then she just goes, "Your star, your story was disjointed. You didn't prepare. Your singing was not that great. It was the worst one of the night." <laughs> and then you're just kind of going, <laughs> "Well, I didn't say you were the worst. Are you kidding me? Myself. I was highly entertained. It's just that Hollywood is just a community of fucking people who blow smoke up each other's asses all day long. So I don't think that you can be." constructive and you can grow or improve if some if people are just constantly tap you know patting you on the shoulder and saying good job like that's you know at some point someone's got to be like objective about it you're right and i i really like that kind of thing because it's you know i do like it it still hurts and it gets sad about i it. just want you to be a little bit more disciplined in the future in those story those stories that people told were were really well prepared and yours was a little bit more disjointed and i can tell because you only took a day to prepare for that story you know Have and you told the story before yeah gilbert i fucking already told you that that's what the thing was oh the same okay i don't know if you, you tell a story it. and you you tell them why you're singing the song <coughs> right so now i'm a big against a wall i like to follow two heavyweights i did kind of have more of a specific story but in my head i'm like i i, I just i'm on survival mode so I cut a lot of my mind and I did my act. Mm -hmm. oh, and then I yeah. tried to, 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 the first three minutes, two and a half minutes, were jokes I do on stage because I needed to get laughs. Get them warm. So I was killing. I, I, I think that I, in terms of response, my stand-up was... Yeah, but you, you that's part of your Right, act. it doesn't matter. I know I cheated. You didn't I'm a cheat. I'm a cheater. Or but then I, then I tried to segue my <laughs> act into the story it felt a little stretched but i did what i thought i had to do under the fucking circumstances man i was fucking under fire you did fine no i did great okay yes i did great <laughs> you did fine i did fucking i did great, great. <laughs> all, right? <laughs> Bobby Lee, all right you fucking <laughs> you unsupportive good. lady <laughs> and you know why she's like that because her mom was so hard on her mm. No. Yeah, your mom was hard on you. Yeah, she. It's not that she was hard on me. She just never gave me any praise, but she also never gave me constructive criticism. So I, I didn't. It was just you know when you were younger, she was in a bad place in her life, so it was just automatic abuse. Right. You know. Mm. So that's that's all I got. I never got any type of positive reinforcement. That just wasn't a part of her repertoire. But mm. I mean, it's just her being a young mom and. But yeah. no, I, I I notice it a lot. I observe it a lot amongst you know people, and they they play the Hollywood game a lot. I'm a fan of yours. You're so great. Good job. And it's always this like fake positivity. Where can I make an argument though? May I make an argument? I don't think it actually is that way with a lot of comedians. I think comedians roast each other a lot, or a little bit more objective with one another. Sometimes but I'll, I'll sometimes I'll know a comic that doesn't really like me, or I don't know them that well. And so I'll throw out a fake compliment just so that I can kind of shatter that surface. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. And this is, I mean, I did it a couple of days ago, but I want to name the name. But I'll just give you a different example mm -hmm. that this didn't happen. Like if I was hanging out with, if I saw Aziz and Zari, who I'm not, I, you know, he's nice to me. We've talked before, but, you know, I'm not friends with him. Mm -hmm. I, I respect him. I like him. You know, I mm -hmm. think he's talented. But let's suppose, like, I'm in a s situation with him, like, in a party. Go, hey, man, I just love you, dude. For, you know, you were great in Parks and Rec. I've never seen it. But I would say something like that. Yeah, that's an icebreaker. That's, like, that's... Those and then are... they go, yeah. Babe. Yeah. yeah. But that's different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I'm a liar. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a full-blown liar. <laughs> but you're not... You're not friends with him i'm saying like friends are even lying to each other in this industry it's like no one's you know huh. no one's very transparent you know everyone's kind of trying to climb the rung and you know i don't know i, I don't so I, I mean like if flattery my stand-up of... friends like eric griffin mm -hmm. they're they don't <laughs> float flow they don't bullshit. they don't i think eric's always very eric's honest. so almost he's like you like kind of like Eric's probably me times a hundred. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, like, dude, you're, you know, what I mean, your timing was <laughs> fucked. Yeah, Eric's great. And then you're like, what? You know, I, I'm not like that with my friends. 
We don't sugarcoat things. I told Chris Del- I've never seen Undateable. Mm-hmm. Chris D'Elia. He goes, what? I just don't want to watch it. And that's how we are. Yeah. But I'm talking about in Hollywood. You, sh- and, and I think like it's like this in any part of the world or business or anything where you will say certain things just to get a leg up in a conversation. I think that is not a bad thing. That's called being polite. Of course, Bobby. That's not a bad thing at all. You don't approach someone you don't know and say, your, your work is shit, man. Yeah. And then try to strike a conversation that way. That's not what I'm saying. And I think that also in my head, I I, I visualize how things are be, are going to be cut together mm-hmm. on the show. Mm-hmm. Right? And in my head, I go, you know what? It's going to be fine. Yeah. When they cut it together, you know, mm-hmm. because they sweeten it. Mm. We don't know what the order is. I and so all that they, stuff kind of I just hope they do a slow mo on the leg drag. It was like the opposite of <laughs> I uh, like, this leg uh, drag. Uh, what is it that Michael Jackson do? The moonwalk? The moonwalk. It's like a, the opposite version of that, if yeah, you can it's imagine. The Mars walk. The Mar- it's like I did the Mars, Mars walk, walk right there. The yeah, I made Mars it walk. up. Yeah. On the spot. <laughs> out of survival. New move. Anyone listen to me right now, It man. almost looked like he had a leg cramp and he just started walking and dragging his oh leg. Or God. that's impressive, too. That he and, had then, a leg cramp. and then, Low and then, potassium. She, and then, you know, I wanted her to come yeah. to the show last night, but she brings her gypsies. <laughs> My oh, band you of brought, gypsies. You brought the squad. She bought three gypsies. Jenna. Some of them had crystals in their pocket. <laughs> Jenna. Uh, no, not Jenna. Oh. One of the hippies had fucking crystals in her pocket. Shandy. Shandy. Yeah, Shandy. yeah, yeah. They're gy- they're my gypsy, my band That's of gypsies. That's fine, but I, they could have jinxed me too. No, they, they loved you. No, they made him do the leg drag. <laughs> yeah, maybe. They loved <laughs> they him. Did it. Maybe. They were much more supportive than me. But I want to say something about Josh Adam Myers. Now, if you don't know who he is, mm-hmm. okay, he is the executive producer of it. He created it. And Josh Adam Myers, I don't know if we talked about on the show, about Angelo Bowers. Ever mentioned Angelo yes, Bowers on the show? But we can so. retell the well, story. Well, I'm going to retell the story, okay? So <laughs> years ago, I met a kid named Angelo Bowers. He was an open micer. One of the best joke writers I'd seen in a very long time. For that level of a guy that hadn't made it yet and was still doing the open mic scene, very good. And and just like non sequitur sec, what did I say? Sequitur. Sequitur, sequitur punchlines, like really drastic switches you know really good writing and um so i you know it was when i was with maker george yeah so i brought angelo in with mickey to get him a job there Mm. that's how much i believed in this kid he was a fat kid from modesto and um just the nicest guy you would ever meet in fact he was so poor i took him to el cholo which is a mexican food restaurant and he was so grateful for the meal. He ate everything on the plate, not just even the parsley, the relish, or even the shit that like the garnish, the, yeah, garnish, the garnish, yeah, the garnish, yeah. yeah. He cleaned the plate. I remember that. It's like me. <laughs> so one day, he calls me. His mom calls me. His mom calls me and says, "Hey, Angela wanted me to call you. He's in Modesto now." And I'm like, "Why?" And he said, um, "He has cancer." And fucking fuck me up I, it was like what he's 24 yeah you know mm-hmm. he's a nice kid and he spent a year up there chemo the whole thing and his best friend is this guy josh adam myers who created the show that i did last night mm-hmm. so a year later i get a call from him and he says i'm coming back into town so on a sunday I met him at the comedy store. It was an open mic night. He went up and I go, hey, Tuesday, I want to bring you back into Maker. You know? And he goes, yeah, yeah, cool. So Monday night, anyway, so let's cut to Tuesday morning. I get a call from the manager at the time. Now he's the talent coordinator, Adam Egit. Mm-hmm. And he goes, are you sitting down? And I go, yeah. And he goes, Josh and... Um, Angela were in Josh's Jeep and drunk driver hit them and Angela died instantly. And he, he was on blood thinners because of the chemo and stuff or whatever and he bled out. Josh was in the hospital and he was fucked up. Not only did he lose his best friend, but he was in critical condition. 
So everyone, I mean, every every comic was at the Cedar Sinai. So this kid overcame cancer only to get killed in a car accident. Yeah. right after that's, an, that's the, 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 the day he thing comes I've ever back heard. from L.A. Right. The strength of also Angela Bowers is this: is that even though he was an open micer, when they did, um, we did fundraising shows, right? The improv one, Sarah Silverman, Rogan. I mean, Harlan Williams. These are people that didn't even know him. Shut up. I mean, A-list stars that didn't even know Angela Bowers just because of the word of mouth showed up to his like fundraiser. They they made a lot because his parents were wealthy. Yeah. They, they were poor. Mm -hmm. And so now we would go to the hospital to see Josh. And he obviously, he was fucked up over it for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you deal with that? Not only did a drunk driver hit you, but uh, here's another thing that just uh, what I heard from Josh a couple of months ago. He w when he went to the trial of the kid that killed them, the killed drunk Angela, the drunk driver. Yeah. And apparently his sister mm -hmm. said, you know, yeah, but, you know, he, I got a – I guess she was in the car or something. She uh -huh. goes, I got a bruise on my leg too. So oh, like God. made it like, you know what I mean, tried to like – Someone just died. And it's like, no, number one, it's like you killed a really talented, nice kid. So go fuck yourself. Some people are just, it, you know, they're just trying to they like, money yeah. Or something. yeah. So here's this guy, Josh, who, you know, he's an open mic or his best friend died, this and that. So he starts this, this thing where, you know what? I want to do this thing where I, cause I like rock and roll and they did it for years in LA. The show. The show. And it just kind of builds and builds and builds. So last night I told him, I go, it is just an amazing thing to see where you were. and Because he was all fucked up on drugs and all that stuff too, you know what I mean? And and to see you go from there to executive, being an executive producer of a show that you created, that you stuck by with for many years, is so inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's why I did it too. You know, I did it because of that. And I thought I did a pretty good job. <laughs> but Kalila begs to differ. Yeah, but Kalila no. begs And you know what? When you guys see the fucking thing one day, you be the judge. Mm. I You make it seem like I'm just not a supportive person at all. No, I'm not so saying that. Unfair. No, you, she usually is, except for last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That specific I want to say that. For last night, she was... She wasn't that much. That one yeah. night. Not I, so much. Not so much. I only had a few brain cells working. My, my, my yeah. the fever she was, was getting I've never way. seen Kalila <laughs> in the three years we've been um, dating this sick. <laughs> yeah, why are you so sick? Ah, fuck, bro. I never get sick with a cold or flu. I've never heard your voice like this. Well, that's the thing. It's because I never catch the cold or flu. I generally have a very, very tough immune system. But um, I, I, you know, I got hit hard, too. Like, I have the most violent cough. But I'm fine. I'm fine. It's no big deal. You're Just getting better today. Food. I have a question for Gilbert. Mm -hmm. Are you? Do you want to be a chicken for Halloween next October? <laughs> or is that what you're trying to do? Get skinny legs Let's and a big body? This. Or I walk into Bobby's home. I greet them. And Bobby looks at my body from a distance <laughs> in silence and goes, mm, "You a chicken leg? <laughs> it's because I'm wearing skinny jeans." That's not why. And yes, I've gained weight You've in gained? my butt. My gained weight in my butt cheeks no, and my thighs. What's happened is this. I only noticed your face. No. Well, thank you, you for the body. <laughs> talking about my fat face. I have a fat when face. you gain weight, you're going to, I think your legs, I think your legs have AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think your legs, I, you're the first probably <laughs> leg AIDS. Leg, leg AIDS. Just specific. Yeah. Because your legs look so nimble and sick and skinny, but your body is now getting fat. You're, you're not the first person to say that. In rehearsal the other day for uh, the CBS showcase, uh, there's a scene called Worm Men where all the guys take their shirts off. Yeah. And I refuse to take my shirt off. Yeah. So then I, the producer was like, Gilbert, just take your shirt off. It's just a rehearsal. What's going on? I lift up my shirt. She goes, wow, you look so skinny with clothes on, but you're so fat with your shirt off. Yeah, what's going on with you? I'm just not eating healthy. You've been on the go and you've been very there's busy. A lot of, there's a lot of pizza. I eat. You know when you go to these things, all the catering food. Yeah. Yeah. I see people bring their own lunch. The other actors. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm too lazy to do that, so I eat the pizza. Gilbert, the when uh, this whole CBS showcase is over, you're coming with me to the gym because I refuse to have you get fat and sad again. Is Bobby gonna come? When I, yes, I, I signed him up for the gym. I did a movie. You signed up. Do you know who, I signed him up. Do you know who Brian? <laughs> he has a membership. Do you know who Brian T is? 
Yeah, Fast he's like and an Asian. Yeah, 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 he's Fast and Furious, but he's also on that new NBC like Chicago oh, Med um, show. Chicago Med, he plays a doctor. Right. Yeah. So I did a movie with him once, and for lunch, you know, I'm at catering, and he brought a little clear b- b- container with kale meal prep and two slices of little chickens. But there's free food. I know, but that's what they do to stay disciplined. I've already accepted I'm fat. This is the look. But you see, he I'm, I'm, I'm dedicating my life to this look. But you know, this is his max. His max is never. He's never. His body You're not cannot go 400. physically. No. No. No, 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 it's impossible. It's impossible. His genetics won't allow for him it to won't. pass 175 pounds. For not, his and I've never been 175. Little... I'm 165. <laughs> Get it uh, right. Yeah, get get it the right. fucking scale right now. Wow. George, yeah. it's in the kitchen. Get the scale right now. Yeah, go get the scale. Go get the fucking scale. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, I can't 172. No, you said 175, well, you said 175 right? And I said, said 165. 165. <laughs> so let's see where we're at. Well, who's so closer? Okay. If you if, lose, if you go over, right? Right. Who's, whoever is closer yeah. wins, right? Yeah. So what is the bet? Have you eaten today? Yes, you just had a Jersey Mike's. I bought it. Yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, you fluffed them up. Okay, here. Let me... Yeah, no, 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 no. Let me let, let me what? You're not gonna fucking do your little Filipino cheating method not. mechanism. She's gonna put weights on it. Yeah, you can put weights on it. All right there, it is. We have. So uh, what is the bet? Okay, so what what's the bet? If if he if I'm closer, if the I thwax, win, thwax. No, fuck the yeah. thwax. Yeah, thwax. Thwax. Yeah, but I don't feel. Thirty wax. Thirty wax. Thwax don't hurt me. Oh, I'll hurt you. <laughs> I'll hurt you. Thirty okay, wax. Go ahead. You want to do thirty wax? And if 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 I win, what do I get? Thirty wax. Was that the most painful thing he hates? No, I just get to bite your stomach. Oh, God. Oh, you can bite my stomach. What the yeah. fuck You can bite my stomach. Okay, yeah. I might get to bite your stomach then, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's they got to be equal. Does she hate that? Yeah. Uh, I'm sick. Oh, oh, you want 30 wax yeah. biting the stomach? Yeah. All right. I, yeah, go, All right. Go, go, or a Muay Thai okay. leg kick. Oh, yeah, Muay Thai leg kick. That's what I get. No, 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 because I already got a bruise last time from that. No, no, no. You said fuck us biting the Wait, stomach. you hit him that hard where he bruises? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he collapsed like a, I don't know why he yeah. does that. But. Okay, we have Bobby Lee. Uh, hat so, off. So he's saying he's gonna get oh, naked. Yeah, it's a weigh-in. No, 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 no. Put your no, it's a weigh-in. I don't get to do that. No, it's, it's a weigh-in. Weigh it's all full naked. Oh, okay, so Bobby, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're listening, I, I Bobby, Bobby's taking off his yeah, pants. Yeah. It's like a UFC weigh-in, yeah, like oh, and God. he's completely <laughs> naked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> stepping up to the stage <laughs> is Bobby the Emperor Lee. Okay. Uh huh. Please God. Okay. What is? Please God. Please God. Please God. What is it? Thirty-four point eight pounds. What does it say? Thirty-four pounds. No, Whoa! It's broken. <laughs> it's broken. It's because it's, it's on the carpet. It's on the carpet. You got to do it on the floor outside. Go right here, right here, right here, right here. Yeah. There you yeah. go. On the bathroom floor. Okay, they're measuring right now. Bobby. George. His first weighing was thirty. Don't let him cheat. Okay. I need to see I feel, it. I feel like you better check that. Wow! We have 164. <laughs> Show that belly. Show no, that belly. 30 wax. Oh, 30 wax. 30 wax. I really 30. wanted to bite your belly. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just bite it anyway? No, you can bite it anyway. 30 wax. 170. George, like, time yeah, code 28 for pixelating. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Hang on, you cannot slap me where my bracelet is because you're going to push the bracelet I know, into but my I, skin. I'm only going to do one arm over and over again. You can't do switch it. arms. Okay, I don't I feel care. bad. Why do you feel bad? When have you ever I felt bad, bad about hurting It's because you're, ca- so you're on camera. Yeah, I feel bad. <laughs> he never but... shows me mercy. Oh, oh fuck, two. Bobby. Jesus. Two. Oh, yeah, kid, huh? yeah. <laughs> that was only number two. 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 Okay, suck it. Look at her face. You're Yo, did she not say this doesn't hurt me? It doesn't hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> baby, baby, baby. That's two. All right. A bet's a bet, bitch. All right. Give me two. All right. Three, oh, three. Bobby. Yeah. You said. <laughs> You're also not thwacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my style. You're punching down. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm Are you three. punching? I'm punching. <laughs> He's three. not. That's not three. a thwack. That's not a oh, thwack. I'll do more whack. Can three. I show you how you no, fucking thwack me? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not at 175. You can't do anything. Oh, sorry, but doggy. Move. Give me your arm. Oh, you're you're gonna, really go, off. Give me your arm. Give me your arm. Sweetie, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> please don't have a heart attack right 47. now. Forty-seven, forty-seven more. Oh, hang on, right. please. I look. Uh, right, Gilbert, right. look. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do a different. After I'll only different two, area. it's that red. I'll do a different area. Maybe just you guys, ten. Yeah, he's yeah. not thwacking. He's punching watch downwards. What I'm, doing. I'm using the two fingers. Watch. watch. Get, 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 get baby. Get baby. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Ready, ready. No, not on the chair. <laughs> Chopping right, block. All right, all right, all right. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, I don't want to do it anymore. Okay. I have to do at least one more. Right? <laughs> All right, that's it. That's five's enough. 
What? That's oh. it? Yeah, I'll give you a loose arm. You want more? I mean, it's going to bleed soon, it's I gonna think. It's going to bleed, yeah, yeah. So you know what? I owe you twenty five more. At any, okay, at fair any enough. Time he no, wants. you can go different places. No, no, finish I'll, the I'll thirty. Fuck your, I'll fuck up your arm. Then I'd rather you do finish your thirty because I don't want to. I don't want All you right. to cry about okay. it. Okay. But just move around the I'll arm. Go right, I'll go right so here, the how then. many was that? Well, you have twenty five more. Twenty five oh, more. Twenty five. Just move yeah, around, yeah. okay? All right. You really want a red arm? Okay. Oh. Ooh. Okay. I you feel bad, baby. You also like look at her I eyes, did. though. You knuckled me. You <laughs> fucking knuckled, knuckled me. You bastard. You Come here. He knuckled me. Oh. He knuckled me. That's it. We'll do it later. We'll do it later. Hey. Hey. No violence here. Let me it's knuckle you now. No, 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 babe. Let's go back to the podcast. People don't want to hear this shit. Okay. Oh my gosh. So, uh. <laughs> How many times do you got, a week do you guys go through this like physical <laughs> one day. Day. every day? Oh my god! Every gosh. fucking yeah. day. Every day. There's wrestling. There's choking. Yeah, there's there's kinds, hair there's all pulling. Kinds of stuff going on. But it's always to be. I know, like I'm crying about it and stuff. But I think I secretly like it. Love the painful attention. Oh. Like okay. there's something very bonding about it when yeah. someone like playfully beats you up. Yeah. It's funny. I also want to say so this, and I, I've been, I've been, you know, I don't like reality shows. Do you guys know that? You hate them. I hate them, except for the four hundred pound one. I love that one. Yeah, <laughs> but I found a new one. <coughs> it's called a uh, fucking. I can't even. It's called Long Lost Family. <coughs> Long. Long Lost Family. It's on TLC. Of course. It's the best reality show I've ever seen in my life, because <laughs> it's part comedy, and part sad. Part sad. Comedy on purpose. No, you know what it is. It's it's basically kids or peop, adults who either were adopted or gave up a kid for adoption, mm-hmm. trying to find, you know, yeah. their sibling or vice versa, right? So, um, it really is. I mean, we saw a couple of episodes. Like, what's one that episode? literally? I'll give you an example. There's one girl from LA. She's, you know, she had a family Mm -hmm. a mom and dad happy life at the age of 19 it was revealed to her that her dad was not her dad accidentally though accidentally someone was like yeah you how does you look italian yeah because you look italian yeah see i don't i'm not italian yeah you are italian look at your face which is kind of rude that's who says i'm just tan (laughs) or whatever you know but (laughs) italian people are good gender yeah yeah good looking so then her mom, he asked, she asked her mom, like, am I, I'm not Italian. She's like, well, your dad is not your biological, biological dad. He's like, who the fuck's my dad? Just like that. God. She's like, well, I was in Seattle in the late sixties and I was working at a pizza joint or I was at a pizza joint yeah. and I met a guy that worked there and we had sex for a couple of weeks <laughs> and then I never saw him again. Barely even remembered his name. Yeah. Barely remembered his, her name. He got, she got it wrong too. When she tell her, told her the name. So what the show has investigators and they go out and they they go to ancestry.com or these places they do DNA they matches. do DNA matching and all kinds of stuff to find you know their loved ones and um they found them and so now this girl is now now she's 39 so it took her 20 years to even do it so now that's where their show takes place so she's like I'm doing it now because my dad that my biological dad could be dead so I, w- I want to do it now so this lady, she's also a, she owns a animal. Like a rehab. Rehab. Um, she has like a rehab <coughs> facility for animals in like Topanga. Or in Topanga, like. right? They find the hip. He lives in Oregon. Yeah, he's in Oregon. They find the hip. And you, you know what he does for a living? He has an animal sanctuary. He's a director for wildlife rehabilitation, yeah, rehabilitation. in Oregon. You guys want to do with cats. They do this. No, but. So the dude, bad. So they don't live with each other the, also imagine the 70 year old man going you have a daughter yeah right they don't know each other and yet they still both do the same thing that's if as if I, if I was adopted and then four years 40 years later I find my dad and he has his left foot missing yeah. from, from fungi you know what I mean <laughs> and he and then and like he has a tattoo of Pringles on his chest <laughs> you, play, <laughs> you know what I mean play Skyrim yeah yeah, yeah. He changed his name to Destiny. Destiny. <laughs> you know, and like, you know, that kind of cosmic. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're both the same people. Yeah, they are. And, and. So what was the reunion the, like? The, the mo- it, oh, it was especially emotional oh, because the man never had his own biological children. Right. He raised uh, his stepdaughter. Yeah. And, who he loves. And then when he sees her for the first time, it's just so, 
it makes you cry so hard. Because they look the same. Yeah. That last you know? episode I saw, made it broke me up, dog. Yeah, this shit broke this us This shit up. breaks you up, bro. You know, it's such a touching thing. And I thought I was dead in my heart. I had, I, I, You're the least dead person. You cry at everything. But nah, bitch. Nah, I'm a man. <laughs> God damn it, bitch. Blah, blah, it blah, 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 blah. I'm a man, dog. No, I don't. Cr- I, when do I cry? Crying makes you more of a man. Oh, I cry a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> yeah. Me too, I cry so much. I'm a cry. To- I cry. Do I do cry during? Um, yeah, I do cry during reality shows and some movies that we watch and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like I cried last night when we saw that documentary Thirteenth. Thirteenth. It's on Netflix. It's really touching. Mm-hmm. It's, it's about- basically it's a documentary that um, centers around around the Thirteenth Amendment, which essentially the Thirteenth <laughs> Amendment is to disallow slavery in America right. unless. Unless it the person is like um, a prisoner or like is you know a criminal basically mm-hmm. right, and it just talks about like mass incarceration of black people essentially being the modern day version of slavery yeah. and how prisons are a very very profitable mm-hmm. um, business for um, a lot of corporations and it gives you the whole history of why prisons are such a booming business and why we don't want to get rid of them and why we continue we it's essential. To that 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 we continue to and o- uh, also over the people. years people they've tried like different ways mm. since they abolished slavery. Um, white people have done different ways to chain them, continually o- oppress, oppress basically. them. Yeah, you know, because and it's it's what made the money. Slaves made them a lot of money in the past, so it's like how do we continue what is your face to right make now, these white people man? how to still make I money? I think it's because you people. said white people. You know, but she, he always goes like, when we bring something up and like that. It. He always questions. Do it at the same time. It's it. Mm, you're like, mm, you know what I mean? Like, what, what the fuck? You're, what are you thinking right now, friend? What am I thinking? I'm thinking the main problem is the war on drugs. Is my uh, is my take on it? The war on drugs is a very that's racist. A, yeah, that's in the fuck. That's in. The, it is. White people use as much drugs as anybody else, but it's all. Uh, but watch look this at because the prison doc like prison population is very much uh, skewed towards non-whites. That's non-wise. exactly why. Because especially- yeah, so it's one in. I think the statistic is one in every seventeen. Is white in in mm-hmm. prison? Wow, one of every seventeen, 17 in, in, in blacks though. What is blacks? So one in every three black men are going to be in prison, um, in prison, in, or jail, or Imagine prison that. in their lifetime. So uh, so it's like the statistics. Statistics statistically, it is. It's what absurd. are Asians? One yeah. out of every ten thousand. Ten thousand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one crazy shooter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When we do it, we do it hard. We though. do it hard. Yeah. yeah, A but plus Virginia, so the, Virginia Tech. The, A plus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true, awful. but also yeah. bad, <laughs> really bad. bad yeah. But true. But it's actually a very um, it's a little more unbiased of a documentary because it actually shows you just how bad Bill Clinton was in terms of like militarizing um, the police. But he had to do it. He purposely did it because of the fact that no. The, the the last two presidents right. were Republicans, and Reagan right? And Bush, and they all pushed set him up. Yeah, you know this law and order. Es- essentially, the documentary says that if you were a pres- if you were running for president, and you in on your agenda, it had to be a part of your agenda to say that you were tough on crime, or else you would absolutely not win. Mm. So everyone had to jump on this whole idea that you know mass incarceration and just like militarization of the police was the way to go. You know, or else you just weren't going to win the presidency, and so um, it's it's it basically throws everyone under the bus: the Democrats, Republicans, everybody across the board. Yeah. We we did a huge disservice to. It's an enlightening. Black I mean, I don't know much about anything, but like when you were watching it, it really was emotional for me. Yeah, it's just yeah som- somber. You it's know, very somber. Yeah, like wow, I was completely unaware. And you just realize just how ignorant you are of just how how long this has been going on for. You know. And you realize that life is fragile. And we live in a bubble. Yeah, <laughs> and um, my brother and I almost died last week. Oh, my From goodness. The Pringles can? <laughs> Wait, how? Did you know that? That no. my brother and I almost died last they, week? No. They didn't almost die. Yeah, we almost died. What's it? No, me bitch, story. We almost died, bitch. <laughs> Be supportive, Kyle. I'm sorry. They almost died. <laughs> my brother and I haven't talked in a week because of last week's experience. <laughs> after the podcast? Is yeah, happening? After the podcast. Okay. The day after. The day after. Oh, wow. That's fresh. So, so my brother and I, I pick him up. To go get some vapes. Okay. He wanted to get. A, he wanted to start vaping because his lips are looking like fucking, <laughs> just like uh, hyenas. <laughs> I mean, his t- his gums are just rotting. Oh God! Because of the dipping. 
Oh, that's right, you did. He did. I yeah. took him to the dentist two two years ago because his tooth was hurting, and Bobby didn't want to go drive him. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna take you to the dentist. What did the dentist say? And then the dentist <laughs> <laughs> looks at the, the X ray and then looks up at us, looks down and looks <laughs> up at us. My brother had never been to the dentist. Yeah, his whole right. life. Uh huh. And so he yeah. knows he has home remedies about things. Oh, yeah. like, so he goes. He goes to yeah, like two on the other side. It's a yeah. No, my brother and I both have damaged fucking teeth. <laughs> you know, we don't like flossing. I don't believe in it. Before we I continue, don't I don't believe in flossing. I'm gonna force you. <laughs> I'm gonna force you to make an admission that he said you you begged me never to tell on air. But well, since don't you talked up, about don't the abortion, bring it up. no bullshit. This is we're playing tit for tat. You fucking put me on blast. Uh, all the time. Uh, I'll, I'll just say it. I'll, I'll say it out front. No, no, no. I'm gonna ask you a question. <laughs> all right, but can we just t- tell me? The, can I tell the tell story me, first? No, but after after you answer my question. <laughs> all right, ask the question. What's happening? Exactly. How many teeth do you have in your mouth? And the honest question is, I don't know. <laughs> but the number, I haven't counted. The number you gave me last week. Uh, if I had to make an educated you, guess. Yeah. He's counting um, with his tongue, I think. Eight. Eight or nine. <laughs> okay, well, that was your guess. <laughs> what? It's Why not eight? a guess. He legit only has eight or nine. Eight or nine. Eight. You know, eight. It's like, all in like the front. One of the he teeth, no I don't know if they're teeth. together or... No, I don't know if they're one tooth or two teeth, so I'm saying that's why I say eight <laughs> or nine. Because of the plaque, I think they... The plot kind of made they, them one. They merged. They merged. They merged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They fused together. They fused together. So I think I'm going to cut that too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my mouth is a disaster. And, um, is I it on- though? Oh, first of all, I only brush the front part. What is that? Because what else is there to brush? Those are the only- no, the f- I don't do the back. You don't the, brush you don't your molars? There. Oh, you're supposed no, to brush No, even before your because the, the showcase teeth are the front. Oh, like the like, pearly you know, whites. I, yeah. The pearly whites. I, right? They go, yes. But no, if you look deep, oh my God. But you never have bad breath, ever. I know. Because they have no teeth. <laughs> but, There's um, no teeth to smell bad. But my brother has the same condition. <laughs> we, we just, we don't, we ne- it, I swear to God, we were never told to bro- uh, floss. We didn't know what, I didn't know what flossing was until like my mid-20s. So There's like just food in your, between your teeth? Yeah, they're just like rotting away my other, yeah, whatever, you know, but. um, Wow. It's fine. But anyway, um, so I don't even know what, oh, so that's, so you, you feel good now that that's out there? Tit for tat. Sorry. You feel good? No, I don't. Okay. So I'm going to tell you the reason why my brother died. Wait, wait, what? What? My brother and I almost died. Oh, yeah. God. Don't say he My brother didn't die. <laughs> um, so we go va- get vapes, and I get him a little thing, and then we go, where do you want to eat? So we're like, let's just drive around. It's raining. And I'm driving a rental, and it's rush hour. It's like six. Mm-hmm. And so we're d- driving up La Siena B- Boulevard, and if you don't live in L.A., it's like one of the biggest, longest streets in L.A. It goes from Hollywood all the way down to, I don't even know where, past the airport. It's long. And But the last tip of it to get onto Sunset is completely uphill, and it's the most congested part of Hollywood ever. And my car just stops. I forgot to put gas in the car. Whoa, that's <laughs> never happened to me before. It's yeah, so scary. I know. But I don't know what's going on because it's a rental. Oh, and also, weird. I'm not in one side of the the street. I'm in the middle lane. I don't know why. <laughs> Rush hour. It's the worst scenario. Rush hour, right? We stop. And my brother goes, what's going on? What's going on? I go, I don't know. I don't. He's like, and then the, the gas thing goes up. You, you put gas in it? I go, it's a rental. I don't know. Right? I go, what do we do? And I go, <laughs> what is this? A, a sitcom? <laughs> no, that's how we talk. <laughs> what do we do? He goes, I don't know what to do. And then we're yelling at each other. I go, go get it. And I throw money at him. Why are you throwing money at him? I go, get, go get gas. <laughs> right? So my brother takes this water. Glass. It's raining. Right? Uh, oh, shit. Now, it's stop. All traffic. You, all you hear is people screaming. You hear honking. Chaos. He didn't even put the emergency lights on. I didn't know. We don't know how. I don't know where the button was. Oh my god! So now I'm outside dr- trying to direct traffic, <laughs> and also it's it, it's the it's on a hill, right? So I'm sliding because I have like slippers on, right? <laughs> so I'm oh. sliding, and I see my brother running from the distance, right? And he just disappears. He abandons you? No, he's trying to get to oh. the gas station. So now I'm in a blackout of sheer just 
panic. And then 10 minutes later, my brother, I see my brother running with a red canister. Right? I go, what the fuck took you so long? He goes, fuck you, why'd you play? You know, and we're yelling at each other, honking this and that. And then I open up the thing and I pour the gas in and it it won't go out of the thing. Because they didn't have the fucking spout, the... You know, you need, oh, yeah. you can't just pour it. You can't just so, buy gas. Yeah, you need the actual yeah, so, um, so funnel. Now, so now thing. we're just being drenched with gasoline. <laughs> Nothing's going into the thing. Gasoline fight in the middle so of now we're, we're drenched in gasoline, screaming, what do you fuck? You know, and, and then my brother tried to look at the directions on the fucking thing, right? It's complete panic. You're still in the middle of the road? Yeah, people also, can I just say why we almost died? People are like going around our bodies Very to close. get around with like... Literally this close are hitting us. Mm -hmm. Also, we're both wearing like we're slipping because it's you know, and we're afraid the car. And then at one point we're pushing the car, but it's the you know I don't know how to put it a neutral. It was <laughs> it was chaos. Right? Also, why are you pushing a car uphill? Panic at all? I don't know panic because I wanted Steve to. Steve called me right after. Kalai, we needed you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what happened. So yeah, what. Ha Next thing I know, I just see two dudes running toward us in the middle of La Cienega. Two doormen from the comedy store. Nice. I don't know their names. I forgot. To, I didn't memorize them. Mm. But I know what they look like. Yeah. They're comics. They're open micers from San Diego, the both of them. Mm. Hey, Bob, we saw you. God, we don't know how to use it. <laughs> how do you use this? Right? Bobby, stop talking like that. <laughs> you know, and so... He's like, oh, all you have to do is this. He puts it in the thing. It happens like that. Yeah, just like that. I throw the thing in the back of the car. I start the car. We just drive away. <laughs> Wait, you didn't like give him like money or? No, I, I. Oh, dude, you don't even know what I'm gonna. I'm gonna make his career. This guy. Nice. He saved her life. What if he's not funny? It doesn't matter. <laughs> gonna, I'm, gonna do gonna everything, I'm gonna do everything I can to help this guy. Awesome. And this that's guy, all it takes to have your career made is like to know how to put gas in your car. No, that's oh. not gas. It's it's saving your life. Good Samaritan. You, uh, you don't see the thing is is what you are doing right now is. What you're doing is you're taking the situation and you don't you weren't there, man. It's like Vietnam. You weren't there, man. Look, you uh, hear the stories of this and that, but it's like you, until you're in okay, the also, I was, I was in the that, Let me tell jungle, you another dude. one. A week before that, he calls. I have like five missed calls. So I know it's not good. Call him back. He goes, like, what's the problem? He goes, I got into an accident. I was like, oh, God, are you OK? Oh, is damn. the other person OK? He goes, no, I ran into a center divider all by myself. Right. <laughs> And I was like, well, I have AAA. I was like, call AAA. Yeah. I don't have AAA. I, I, I already put him under my AAA. Mm. He has AAA. Call AAA. I don't know how to do any of that. And he didn't, nothing actually happened to his car. He just popped a tire. Oh. By the time AAA got there, he, it was just a flat tire. But he, in his panic, he did, in his mind, he thought he had just crashed and totaled the car. But he hit. He doesn't know how to think when he's panicked, and it, and that's normal, I guess. I'm I'm one of those guys. I'm a coward, I, and also I'm a liar. <laughs> like if I'm on a plane and I'm at the emergency yeah. exit row, and they say, "In case of emergency, will you be able to help us out?" And I always go, "Yeah, yeah. I can't. I know I can't. If we go down, we're all dying." Yeah, because I don't know how to open that thing. Bobby, just turn the latch. I don't no. know. I, cause I I know that in a situation, I'm not a man in that way, and I'm ashamed of it. But when you were growing up, like no one taught you how to like take out the lug nuts to use. No, up. my brother and I learned how to dodge my dad's golf swings because he was in a violent rage. Real life yeah. situation. Like he never taught us anything. Like a jack. No, he never. Cap. They never taught us anything. They only taught us about running from fear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a really good. That's actually a good life, life skill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if there's like whenever I see, you know, like the, you know the terrorist attacks in, in 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 Europe and stuff like that, I feel like maybe I could survive because I'm such a coward. That as soon as I hear something, I'll like go into a fetal position and I'll cry myself into you know. Have you ever stealth mode? Have you ever been tested in that way though? Like I think that I've been sort of tested. I was in high school and we had a little bit. We had a a tunnel from one building to the next and somebody blew up one of those m80s in the um in the Toilet? tunnel oh no in the tunnel as everybody was um running going to their next class and it sounded like a fucking bomb had got off right yeah and 
everyone sort of collapsed to the ground like in fear trying to like cover and I looked at my sister she looked at me and we were zigzagging through that tunnel and trampling over people but we came out of there like fucking champions Mm. And we thought to ourselves, holy fuck, like maybe we're more prepared yes, than we thought. I am. I just thought of a situation. <laughs> what? I was at the comedy store. This is 15 years ago. And we used to have Fat Tuesdays, which was an urban night. Mm-hmm. And I, somebody pulled out, I'm not kidding you, a semi-automatic weapon. Shit, semi-auto? Yeah, it was oh. a pop, 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 pop. in the air. <laughs> and he was tackled immediately. Mm-hmm. But I was the only one that had... I hit underneath like a, a table immediately. Yeah. And I was already in the position. Yeah. Before and people were still standing. They didn't even know what was going on, but I was already in the position. Mm. So I think I'm a survivor in that way. Instincts. Yeah. Maybe. You know. But you never really know when it's I know. I think that somebody should create a college <laughs> called Man School. That's and good. they teach you how my brother and I talked about that cuz my brother and I both don't know how to change a tire. Mm-hmm. My brother and I don't know how to put gas in a car in that way, mm-hmm. in an emergency situation. We don't know anything because we were never taught it. I don't know anything about engines. But this was not a man thing, though. I feel like no, everyone I want, should learn that. Yep. Yeah, no, I, I just want a school out there to teach me how to do manly things like, you know, fix a pipe. Oh, I can't do that. I know, but that's what I'm saying yeah. is, is that I don't know how to do it. I've been so used to just making phone calls. This like is the so other day. true <laughs> because when I go to their parents' house – Tell them what your mom, your parents have me do for three they days They have straight. a list of things to what Kalila should do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's just <laughs> this, repair that. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And him and Steve are just playing video games and doing their little yeah. thing. And I'm like repairing just about fucking <laughs> everything. And when I'm done, she'd be like, okay, Kalila, now this one, this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm fixing their Wi-Fi. It's everything. like I'm just the handyman. Yeah. So my brother and I just like, we don't know. And uh, <laughs> like the other day, she's like, I need an air. What is it you wanted Oh, a hum- uh, humidifier. Yeah, so I, I'm not gonna go get it. We get, we got, <laughs> we called. What's it called? It, there's a Postmates. service called Postmates. Huh? You called Postmates. Get humidifier. <laughs> Postmates <for a> humidifier? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was too sick to go, and he was like, "I'm not gonna go drive and get go to Target." So you yeah, got a delivery so service. And number one, did it work? Yes, it did. And they got the right one. They did. And it worked out at yeah. the very end. Thank you, Postmates. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to say, say to Tiger Belly fans, um, I, I was in that <laughs> shitty movie, Keeping Up with the Joneses, and I was just I saw it on iTunes. And there's three comments on it, and the third comment is a Tiger Belly fan, which I really, it's really, it's really. Good. I love how they make themselves, yeah. they make themselves known too. Yeah. They're like Bobby's the best part of this movie. Hashtag Tiger, Tiger Belly. Belly on the thing. It's That's really awesome. fun, and I think that you guys should keep doing that. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It makes me giggle. So, are you guys having a good 2017 so far, or what? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think so tired though. We'll see what happens this pilot season though. <laughs> That will be a bad 2017. Well, you're starting. I mean, no, I'm not gonna like Don't really it. rub it in your face, but you know, Gilbert, like you did get a little bit chub chubs. You need I to know. work on it. I know. It doesn't matter, in my opinion. Actually, you're just who cares? You're funny. You're talented. Here's the thing: I don't know my identity. Do I go fat or do I go skinny? It but I just know that, that I just know that being fat makes you sad. It's so stupid. It makes him sad. It's like somebody tell Eric Stone Street, hey, you got to lose weight. No, he went yeah. in himself and he got the fucking Yeah, thing. but he's happy as he is. But Gil- I know Gilbert. You know, yeah. for me, it's like when people go, you got to do your hair this. I wear this. I go, fuck that. I'm just going to do me. I'm going to go in and do what I want to do where I'm fucking comfortable. And, and if like when they go back when you're first getting an agent, they go, well, you have to audition for this cop role. So you should dress up. Nah. And so I would show up wearing a T-shirt and jeans and everybody in the lobby would be in cox, cop uniforms. And I'm not going to do that because if you can't have the imagination as a producer or a writer to look, one. go, let's imagine him in a cop suit, right? That's why I'll wear it when I get the job. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's weird when people dress up like that. It's I not even so in anything too. when they go, you need to wear a bow tie. Fuck you. Nah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not wearing nothing. And when they go, it get the worst at auditions. You have your headshot and resume? Nah. IMDB, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> nah. Keep it up with the Joneses. Do they still yeah, yeah. ask for headshots, like in f- physical headshots? For, uh, yeah, they do. They do. for. I don't think for people like him, forget offers. Not Every once either. in a while they do. And it's like, I always look at them like, no, I don't. Yeah. Okay. And the reason why, I mean, I don't want to say it, but it's like, if, if, this is a comedy, right? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm going to sound cocky and weird, and I'm so sorry. But this is what I really feel. 
Okay. I'm. This is a comedy movie or TV show, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you don't know who I am at this point, then we have nothing to talk about. Mm. That would be like I don't know why you would need because it, I'm. I'm going to say this right now. If I'm a writer and I'm a producer of comedy, I'm going to know where who everyone is. You're going to know really a do. full roster. Of really, like if, if, even if like even if like someone even lower wrong, I'll, I'm just gonna know them, you know. Yeah, and also there's a very limited amount of Asian comedians, so it's like yeah, unless you're somebody who just yeah, that's what I'm, white you know people, that has okay. a lot to do. With, if I was a white dude, no, I would give him a headshot. Yeah. But because also I'm specific in that way, where it's like Asian guy handful, yeah. right? There's now it, it goes down to five guys, mm-hmm. six guys, really in terms of me being a threat. Being threatened by somebody, there's like six guys that threaten me, Asian guys. Uh, no, none of them else do, you know. And so it's like at that point, no, you don't get a headshot. Mm-hmm. Is that wrong for me to think that way? No, I don't know why they would ask you. No, but do, do, let me ask you for real. Is that you too, sweetie? Is that wrong for you to think that? Um, <clears throat> look, I think that if you're a casting director and you work in comedy and you want to be respected. You ought to be very knowledgeable about the roster of, you know, comedians out there. And if you don't know that, then you haven't done your homework as a casting director. And That's how I exactly how I feel it's like, about it. It's like we all go to school or we all practice for our jobs, right? It's like, what does the job entail? The job entails that you know a full list of, you actors, know, yeah. actors and comedians. And if you don't, then you're slacking. You're not on the up you know you're not staying on top of your job yeah i also want to say this before i forget meryl streep got the golden globe um lifetime achievement what was it what did she get the lifetime cecil, achievement cecil b, b- awards cecil, cecil b, b-, b-, yeah. b- demil is that what it is mm-hmm. you don't know anything yeah. about it well i i saw the video I, 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 but I, I don't watch the award show, so I, I, I don't know the I, name I, 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 specific <laughs> award that she won yeah, but yeah. if uh, you say cecil b i know your the attitude right now is spunky what is funky? Funky. funky. Is I don't good, know. I just made it up. Is that a good thing? Funky. Yeah. You're, you're f- being so spunky right oh, now, you're dude. You're funky. <laughs> Rock and roll. Spunky. Rock and roll, buddy. So, um, and I agree with what she said, except for it's, the fact that whole speech. MMA. She attacked mixed martial arts. She attacked mixed martial arts. And said it was not an art. Of all the things <laughs> to attack, <laughs> yeah, the one I just think that martial arts have existed way longer than act- her great grandparents. Like to attack and, something that's so. But also, she implied that it's more of a Republican kind of Trump she's supporter like, wait, this kind is where, of yeah, yeah, yeah. activity. Like she's not like, wrong because they know no. it's the ultimate Trump supporter. Yeah, but the thing is, is that a lot of people that I know that like MMA or UFC aren't Trump supporters. Exactly. So she's very. She sounded. You think like Joe, Ro- you think Joe Rogan is a uniter. fucking Trump no, supporter? And uh, no. no. What I'm. This is where her speech was going so well, and I was really like that kind threw of me really, off. And like, when what? she when she said that it was almost as if like ah you're just one of those grouchy grandmas that's just like everybody in their facebooks and their cell phones like yeah. that's what she sounded like when yeah. she said mixed martial arts and football too it's like lady look you're you you've been doing everything up and everything you've been saying up to this point it was beautiful great. but then you don't shit on sports athletes are you know they put they or dedicate sports their, fans. Yeah, sports it's like fans. oh, only the arts. This is the arts. Just acting and singing and that was being. That's too much. Too that's like you fucking. It yeah. made her sound elitist. But also on top of that, as the president nominee or whatever, or the what's it called, elect president, you elect. don't respond to that. You don't. It's it's it should be beneath you. It's beneath him. But he loves to though. You know, it's like it's like if Spence Barack Obama him. mentioned all the his all of his cr- cr- critics in a tweet, he would never do that because he's above it. Mm-hmm. He's the fucking president. You know, let us, you know, us regular people, we nominated you to be above that. Right? Mm-hmm. Look at me. You didn't see, nominate I, him. But, I know, uh, but, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know, but when I look at you, I, I see him. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I Bobby. do. When I look at you, That's I see him. That's an insult. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know if I can ever shake it. <laughs> I just see him right in you. Man. When I look at you, I see Donald Trump. That's the worst insult ever. It's just oh. like 
I can never. I just all my <laughs> hatred and anger is gonna go towards you. Babe, the same way oh that you, God. George, like the same way that you didn't like oh. being lumped together with all the affliction wearing meatheads of UFC is the same way George doesn't want to be lumped together with everything. I've never been lumped together with affliction. Meatheads. Well, that's what Meryl that Streep. No, that's what Meryl <laughs> yeah. Streep did to us. As anybody who likes MMA, even if you're, oh, right. you know, we're not that sophisticated, but there are a lot of guys who are more sophisticated, like Ariel Helwani or Joe Rogan, and who are really, really intelligent people who watch martial arts. Yeah. She's just uneducated. That's how I'm, it didn't really offend me that much. It I was didn't. Just, it, it, it was, was just, just uh, like, but it, it took away from her message because I felt like it's it still alienated a whole population of people who enjoy watching sports. Yeah, football, that was a weird one. You're like, too. you're going to attack sports, lady? Like, it, it made her seem as though. She thinks that the only form of arts is, is the, the creative the arts. As the if martial theater. arts is nothing creative at all. That it does. It only takes meathead, meathead dudes with muscles to perform. It's so much more mm. than that. Monks, bro. Monks. Yeah. It's an actual practice. It's a fucking discipline. It's a it's a philosophy. It's not just athleticism. And I wish that she could understand the intricacy and the nuances of, of, of mixed martial arts. What a pity that she doesn't know that. At, you know, doesn't know it like we and do. Also, stop texting me about Steven Yoon. Who? I'm gonna get him eventually. Enjoy. Eventually, Who? I don't like eventually. <laughs> I like right now. God. I want. Oh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, what are you talking about? Yeah, it's like, what are you gonna call? Should I call him or are you gonna call him? It's like, relax. <laughs> no. Why? Because he sees. Just text him. Because he sees Trump in you. Just text I see him. Trump in you. Why. Where are we just, at just, time? Just We're at text. more than one an hour. Text, Bobby. Hour and one. Okay. Like Unhelpful it? advice with Bobby, Kalila, and Trump. <laughs> George. Go ahead. Uh, it's the first one, Kalila, from Omid? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, Tiger Belly. I'm 20 years old, and I'm starting my own podcast with my buddy. Good. Anyways, I started by having us both talking to a mic about random things like conversation, motivation, and a bunch of other things. But I found out that the actual, uh, what is it, pre-science? Presence. Oh, presence of the microphone stunted the conversation. So my question is, do you guys plan uh, about what you're going to cover in each episode, or do you just go without a plan? Thanks, Persian guy. So the presence Whoa. of the mic is throwing his him off. I, 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 you, the presence of the mic hasn't thrown you off ever because you've, you've been a professional performer for over 20 years. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so I think this more applies to a noob like me. When I first when I first started doing this, even the presence of George looking at me or any camera or any lighting would throw me off. And in the beginning, I begged George if we could just make this a strictly audio podcast because it threw me the fuck off. Mm -hmm. I didn't it it took me away from the, the stream of thoughts in my mind. But over time with practice you just sort of like inundate yourself with the same thing over and over again Listen, when I you'll you'll work through your own cracks and you'll work you, it'll become more and more seamless and effortless as you go so it just keep doing it. it's just about you know practice 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 it did throw me off by the way i had to get used to this what mm -hmm. happened was it's not only <laughs> it's not only about the mic and the earphones and whatnot it's about Okay, we have to create like it's almost like you're on the spot, yeah, mm. and you have to create something, you know, through talking. And when I used to do the road with Pauly Shore in the '90s and Mencia, they would make me do press with them. Mm. Oh, right. So I would go to press with them, and they're two polar opposite types. Mencia was a joke machine. He would have them, you know, bring up these topics. And he had these long bits that he could just, you know what I mean, rattle off. Mm -hmm. Okay? He could actually sell out a room based on his radio. Damn. Wow. Right? That's legit. Pauly did the opposite. Just doesn't know what's going on. Right? He doesn't talk into the mic. He'll walk away from the situation. Which is, I like that too. Because it gave it a weirdness. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. But in my head, I'm like, I can't do either one of those. It's just not a part of my personality. So... When I was when I was forced to do it, when I went on the road years later, I was terrible. Like they would, I would even burn bridges. Like they would, like they don't want you this time, you know, because I wouldn't do the question thing. Because a lot of um, DJs were like, write down these questions that we can ask you. I go, I don't do bits like that, oh, okay. right? So, but what I figured out was I just have to just do what I do. But that took Opie and Anthony for me to do that. When I first did Opie and Anthony, they ripped me apart. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So the next year when I did it again, I came with guns and my guns were I'm going to just say all the things that they're going to say about me up front. Right. So I, I suck dick. I'm ugly. You know what I mean, I mean, just like I, I my life is terrible, you know, th- just to put that out there. And and I did that not to get laughs. I did that so that they would I could just get through it. But w- it worked for me. And then they were like, oh, we love you. We love when you're scared and paranoid and all that stuff. And then I kind of learned to like, and then now it's just whatever. I don't care. I don't think about it. Yeah. You know, but it just takes time. So just do it and you'll learn. You don't have to put them out right now. You can just <clears throat> do a bunch. And then when it feels right, then put them out. Put it to you this way. It's so natural what you're feeling because we have guests that have been on this show whose episodes we've never released. I know, I know. because of true. this and this yeah, is true. why they're very interesting people outside of this room and we th- we we invite them because we think that they'll have so much to say but as soon as the mic is turned on as soon as those cameras are on it's like they're frozen all of a sudden every they, they become non like you know conversation like they don't they don't they've lost all ability to converse with you and and when I first recorded with Bobby, even without a mic, we were just using a computer, our very first podcast together of the calamity. Mm-hmm. We could only do it for exactly 17 minutes Why? because I was stumbling oh. on my words. And even the idea of it being recorded was so overwhelming to me because I thought I had to be a certain way. And you just have to realize that the more organic you are, the less of a shit you give about making mistakes and the less shit you give about about fluff words or saying um or it just just be your absolute self but be your absolute self so much and do it so often that it becomes it does it doesn't even you know become a thought in your mind and expose yourself so much that it just doesn't affect you the 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 mic then becomes your third limb another thing though is too is is that i don't you know how i I pronounce things wrong Mm -hmm. well i don't know how to say certain things (laughs) Normal people would be like, I can't say it or I'm not going to. S- I don't care. Mm. But because I've I have this persona now of a guy who doesn't need to know <laughs> fancy words. You know, I pronounce things in the wrong way. And I don't give a fuck. Yeah. And but that t- that actually I had to learn that because, you know, before I would say, don't say that word because you don't exactly know how to say it. Now I try to attempt it. If it doesn't work, I go, how do you say it? Right, my brother. You think that my brother is like that in real life? He he developed a persona as a defense mechanism, mm-hmm. you know, of this guy who doesn't know much. I don't know, you know, but he knows. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's a manipulator in that way. He's very smart. He's very smart. Yeah, in that when he way. went up on all those theories and stuff, I was like, yeah. Jesus. I mean, my brother. But when he's in, he did it when he was on Mad TV. When he, you know, he has to used to guest star and stuff. He did it when he does podcasts. He does it. He me, he does it when he meets new people that he wants to impress. He pretends that he is like this guy who's just visiting Sim- from a different planet. Simple. simple who's guy. just trying to, yeah, simple. But I wouldn't say it's not, he's not being himself. It's just, it, he has it's elements exaggerated. of himself. Yeah. yeah it's, it's an exaggerated him. version of a, an aspect of my brother's personality. Yeah, but he's still magical in real life. He is he very is, ra- magical no, in real life. No, he's even more magical yeah. in real life. Yeah. Like who he is on podcasts is like an alternate version of mm-hmm. him. I find him to be extra magical. But you will when, but this outside guy of this. doing the podcast mm-hmm. is you're going to create a kind of persona, but that takes trial and error and really just kind of throwing it out there. Oh, his question also is do do we come prepared? Do we come prepared no, I with, don't. I with don't. no Bobby never does. I might have here's the extent of what I've written down, which is just four things, five things jotted down. I have Meryl Streep, stranded car, long lost family, and then jealous. I wrote the word jealous. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel all the time. What is one of the rules, Gilbert? I know what they are. Mm-hmm. But what are one of the rules of improv? Yes and and also what is <coughs> You when they say and, what do they mean by that? Add on to it. Don't ever right. say don't no. Disagree. Don't ever say no or don't disagree. Don't stop. Add yeah. information. Mm-hmm. Mm. You're always adding information. So those rules apply to this. It's mm. like all I have to do is add more information. What people don't want is silence. Mm-hmm. 
right? So I just kind of, you know, I will ask a question or I'll add on to something. Sometimes I say things that I don't, I regret. (laughs) (laughs) But it's still adding. But it's still still adding, adding, right? I'll like in the back of my mind, I'll go, why? Uh, But that's what it is. It's the first uh, few, probably the first 12 episodes that we recorded. After we would record, I couldn't sleep the whole night. I would pick apart every wrong word that I said wrong. And to this day, I still remember which words like that that I can't get over. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's one I meant to say. Those were highly edited back in the day. Oh, yeah. Because one time like I meant to say like noxious and I said noxic and I was like, I'm an idiot. Did I even go to school? So we take out that word. My dad, what do you get? I mean, like, no, it was like we kept it on there and it haunts me to this day. But you soon realize that it's like, you know, three minutes ago, I couldn't even come up with the word converse. Like I stumble on my words mm-hmm. a lot. I'm a stutterer just by nature, you know? But you get over your your insecurities real quickly if you just keep doing it. You figure like, okay, like if I can't get my message across the first time, I'll stutter, I'll stumble, but let me get it across the fifth time. Another you know? another thing. I can, can I do another, one more yeah. advice? It's you never live in the results. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what I mean by that is is that when you're doing a podcast, you can never go or anything creative in this way. If I do this, it's going to lead to this because that just adds more pressure onto what you're doing in the moment. Right. And it doesn't come out organic. You cannot expect anything from this podcast. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm saying to myself. And that's exactly yeah. what we in when we started this, we expected nothing, nothing. Mm-hmm. I, it, it was just a little side project. For fun. Yeah. yeah. For if fun. I've learned anything from people who've made it big on YouTube, they do it for the pleasure of it because oh you're not going to make Here anything. Goes fucking YouTube bullshit again. <laughs> they, no, all they, these people from YouTube. You're right, George. All these people from YouTube. That's a Trump tweet or, right there. Or anywhere. Yeah, yeah. YouTube. <laughs> I, it, what, 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 what's up? All these people from YouTube. What? No, it, I just said it, goddammit. Uh, no, they've, uh, they they do it for the pleasure of it. Like oh, they, they do it for the pleasure. <laughs> They don't do it for the hits. They don't do it to, to, to get followers. You have to do it because you <laughs> want to do it early on. and then No, uh, I never got that from them. <laughs> that's what George got from no, them, dumb dumb. No, 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 that's not what you get from them. Nope. Second question. No, no, okay. no, not the second question. I'm not what? done with this one. Why I'm not keep... done with this. He said the word YouTube. that's going to get me fucking crazy. <laughs> Trigger right. words, YouTube. George. YouTube, come on. What, what else did you learn from YouTube stars? I want to know. I want to learn too. No, the, do it for the pleasure. Do what you want to do. And then, uh, oh, uh, the other thing that the, a lot of smart people do. No, YouTube people. Say yes. that. Yeah. Smart YouTube. You're saying smart YouTube now. Yeah. They're smart. Yeah. Smart YouTube. Holy fuck. Uh, they'll so they'll start with guy. one thing, and then uh, once you see something else, you'll pivot. But you have to be doing something first. Everybody that's, that's, ugh, that's life, bro. Yeah, yo, I know. Yo, I'm yo, just talking about my experience. Know, uh, recent in experience. life, dude. I'm not when talking people about start businesses. Books, what do they say? Uh, people start five or six, seven businesses before they get the one that hits. Fails, yeah. Yeah. You didn't learn that from YouTube. That's life. Go ahead. Next question, life. Bobby. You want the long one or just... No, get the long yeah, one. Yeah, the long one. Get the long one going. I, I can read it if you're... No, I got it. Okay. No, you can read. <laughs> All right. Um, this is from our friend Jojo. Hello, Tiger Belly or Urban Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, Every I should have day. said that. Hollywood Nights, dog. Billy in the house. Hollywood Nights. <laughs> I've come to you with a hopefully clear and understandable inquiry. My girlfriend and I are approaching our two and a half year mark, and I couldn't possibly ask for a better companion. There we go. We know each other through and through, mentally, emotionally, and for the most part, physically. We are what Kalai calls efficiently, functionally, yes, but still very much physically and verbally head over heels for each other. Mm-hmm. To keep things short, the only relevant details of our relationship to this question are listed below. Met in high school, took her virginity, have a very forward and experienced sexuality. Uh, am only one she's been with uh, that intimately. Okay, so hold on. She's, she's Repeat that. She's never been with anyone else? I am the only one she has been with intimately. Okay. Thus, she lacks sexual etiquette. Okay. I fucking love eating her pussy. Okay. Whoa. Is, that's aggressive, man. That's aggressive. She's no, very, like very poor at giving oral. Ooh. Okay. I enjoy giving oral. It pleases me to please her, but I very much so enjoy receiving it as much as most men do. Mm. I have had unforgettable oral encounters prior to my relationship with her, so I have had a taste of the cookie. But now it's just like the jar is locked because morgues just can't <laughs> bake the cookies like some other girls. It's not that she knows and refuses to do it well. It's that she completely lacks the knowledge of proper oral, thus frustrating both ends of the act. Because I am too timid to tell her to do it differently. Did you write this, George? <laughs> Is it you, George? Is that you, George? Going. It so just it, keeps on going. Stop it. 
Stop it. I already know the question. Okay, yeah. ask the finish it, please. Uh, hey, I need your Okay, uh so it just has stopped me complete So it has just stopped completely. Uh, I essentially just want your opinions on how to approach her in the correct way to essentially say, "Hey, I need you to occasionally suck my dick and suck it right because I eat that ass and never get no pleasure." End quote. <laughs> I envy Kalai and Bob's intimate relationship solely for what seems to be the open communication and transparency. I adore the podcast. Some Mongolian's asshole. Keep doing what you're doing. (laughs) (laughs) You get me through my late nights at work. Thanks in advance. Great question. I have the answer. Great question. What is it? Kalai and I watch porn together. What do you know? Okay, hold on. Take that back. Let's be clear. (laughs) He watches porn while I blow him. That is not no, watching no, no, porn no. together. I know, I know, but you and I have looked looked at porn together. Because I see it in like my periphery. No, no, we've seen it together. Oldest for youngers, Clara? We have watched porn together. Yeah, I mean, okay. I guess, yes, we have. And so when she watches porn, I mean, she'll get the porn version of it, but they're pretty they're professionals. They're accurate in many ways. You eat the sack a little bit. You suck on the sack, get the stem, the, stem. the head part, you know yeah. what I mean? Do the whole thing. But um, I would do that. Tell me I don't suck a good dick, She's though. the best in the business. Thank you. Wow. I really am. The best in the business. will be an award for that. <laughs> the lifetime achievement. <laughs> yeah. Cecil B. DeMille. I so, should be giving so a speech So that would be this. the first thing. And also, I'm, I would say this. Just I know they're young. This seems young. How old is he? They're very young. I think they met in high school. So yeah, I'm, high school. And they've only been together two and a half, half years, years. So I'm yeah, so 20. That's, you know, those kind of... I'm 45. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you've gone so, your dick sucked a lot. Yeah, I have. and But I've also, through the years now, just can look at somebody and go, this is what I desire. I mean, you know, I'm not going to not say something. Right. <coughs> she says shit all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like you got to have that open communication, baby. Yeah. I think that when you're very young, you don't know how to do that without – the fear of possibly offending somebody. Rejection. But when you realize that sex is just a really open highway of, you know, and, and it should be a place where I I have this rule where it's a place, I'm a yes man in the bedroom. Like, whatever you say, I'll never judge. I'll never, I'll probably try as long as it doesn't involve like a fucking rusty pole up my ass. Oh. You know, I don't want tetanus. But it's a place where anything goes. And it, you know, I think maybe her I'm trying to think of a time I was reluctant to suck dick. And the only time that I've ever been reluctant to suck dick or if it wasn't enjoyable was if I had some TMJ um, issues with my lock jaw because my jaw clicks on the side or if the dick was like too big because it is a chore. So your, yours clicks all the time with my dick. Yeah, Hollywood Hollywood no, um, uh, or the another time that I really, really didn't want to suck dick was when a guy just wasn't very clean down there, and he wouldn't yeah, clean k- under. K- 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 he wasn't <laughs> jaw lock, jaw lock. He wouldn't clean under his um, turtleneck, <laughs> you know, because he wasn't. Oh, and it was a very, very peculiar, off-putting scent for me when I was very Ooh, young. Yeah, Ooh. and I didn't like going down on him. I still don't love giving blowjobs, yeah. but I see it. I do enjoy it if it's just in the throes of like passion, but if you just ask her, maybe th- consider if you know, ask her about whether or not she even w- enjoys it at all. I know she gives shitty blowjobs right now, but even as she's giving shitty blowjobs, does she enjoy giving shitty blowjobs? Yes. If it's something, because there are some girls who just like I don't like it. It reminds me of this. Mm. I have a very close friend who's legit tells when she first dates guys she's like I just don't suck dick it doesn't I wow. don't like the act of it and you have to respect that you know there's wow. something about it she's gonna be a, an old lady no cats. she's married really yeah she had, she's got a lot of hot dudes too in the past well they just don't like their dick getting sucked I mean they just kind of you know her pus- pussy must be just like like mithril it's super tight you know what mithril is What's mithril? What's mithril? You guys know what mithril is? Mm-mm. What's mithril? It's that stuff in Lord of the Rings where they made the ch- the chess piece for Frodo. It was like a, it's like <laughs> so it's like a special, it's special element. Yeah, it's special. <laughs> yeah, because it, 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 remember when uh, Bilbo goes, "That's mithril," you know? what I mean, armor. Yeah. It was like shiny. Yeah. I my final suggestion is to just say it, like, "Hey, like, ask her first. What do you absolutely love? Like, what is what are you?" What do you love the most about sex that I can improve on? So put it on, you know, put it that way first. Phrase it. 
And then maybe she'll return and be like, well, what do you like? And you then you say, I love blowjobs but this you, but way. Also, this but way. this way, yeah. You know, uh, and everybody's yeah, yeah. different. And girls will find, and she'll find, if you're not the last guy she'll ever be with, she'll find that each guy, you have to learn each one separately. And even, I'm like fucking 32 now. I've sucked a lot of dick in girl, my life. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Sorry. And I, know, I already know you did. I know you suck dick. All Actually, that I have. And I'm not ashamed of it. You know, <laughs> I met every guy, bro. <laughs> sucked a lot of dicks. There is man. one girl that I dated. Better than me who sucked your dick better no, than No, no, no. That I'm was, cry. no, her fuck bad. She, oh, fuck. <laughs> she, she would get on top of me and she would not go up and down, but she would do like a hula hoop thing. <laughs> she's doing the clip thing where she rubs it on your. Yeah, but she's doing it. a hula hoop. So she's going in a circle, like kind of like the. You it know hurts I mean? me. It hurts. It and hurts. also doesn't feel good, right? Yeah. And I would go, no, babe, up and down, up and down sometimes. Sometimes. Goes, okay. And then she would still do the hula hoop, hula hoop thing. Oh, because God. maybe that's what felt good to her. her. Yeah. Yeah, but bitch, do up and down when I say <laughs> that. <laughs> bitch, do up and down. I said, I, I, I had the courage. I had the courage to go, can you just for a little bit go up and down? Yeah. And then she looked at me and says, yes. The hula hoops, the shit out if of If she you. said, nah, then I'd be like, oh, this is how she's going to do it. Yeah. But it's the fact that she didn't even know how to do it. Oof. Well, we had time. How, almost an hour and 30 and romantic comedy 90 <laughs> minutes um, Bobby will be at the Irvine Improv this, this week, weekend maybe Rosenbaum maybe not because he he's, he's sick, sick. Oh. so everybody in Los Angeles seems to be sick right now everyone's rain. sick yeah. that rain yeah so I'm so sorry guys for I you mean, guys I Addison soon um, so Irvine Improv first 13th to the 15th and then he San Antonio Laugh Out Loud January 20th to the 22nd I'm playing that room yep you like that room? You're three weeks back to back. And then and then and then Dallas. And then Dallas. So you had Addison Improv the week after. Oh my after, god! After that, it's gonna be tough. And Schomburg Improv, I think it's the weekend of Valentine's. Oh Chicago. my god! Why? Oh. Am I going with you? Yeah. Which one do you want to go to, lady? You gotta go to Texas with me. Damn. They're both in Texas. Yeah. What a burger! Please go to San Antonio because it's so boring. San Antonio. He didn't mean that fans in San Antonio. He loves your city. No, I mean, I love the Alamo. <laughs> I love the Alamo. The Alamo. He, he loves the historical, you know. I love the Alamo. Uh, um. George, you want to hop on there really quick? Or you just going to stay where you are. It doesn't matter. Uh, any uh, announcements you want to make? Uh, our YouTube is at 30,000 subscribers. So Ooh. thank you, everybody. We just hit that benchmark. Good job, guys. Uh, our Reddit's almost 1,000. Ooh. It's getting close, so thank you guys there. What 999 of whom still hate me so much. <laughs> Reddit. No, it's been pretty nice. The, Reddit, the darkness. The darkness. That I, call it, I call it the darkness. The, uh, the underworld that will consume you. Yep, user Alksbrbit uh, found the uh, how to build your own Pringles can pocket pussy, so he has a link sir. to that on there. Go friend him, meet up, do a, do a Pringles meet up. <laughs> An arts probably, and crafts meet up? We probably shouldn't promote that. <laughs> And then don't forget to uh, rate us on iTunes. So uh, user Noah Sizzle gave us five stars, says one of the realest podcasts. Do your thing, y'all. Hashtag Urban Bobby. Oh, God. I can't <laughs> believe that's like a thing now. Yep. It's become a thing. What about Urban Kalila? Uh, there's no such we thing. Want it to what start. about Long Beach Kalila? Kalila is Long Beach. No, Kalila Long Beach is like, let me suck your dick. <laughs> let me suck <laughs> let me your suck dick? Let me suck my dick. Where the dick's at? <laughs> Um. Anything else, George? No, everything else is too long. Let's. Uh, we'll all read more comments. So leave comments on the YouTube, Reddit, and uh, iTunes, and I'll read them next week if I like them. Uh, well, I don't know how I felt about that whole segment that just happened. <laughs> what segment? That segment. <laughs> we are reading comments. <laughs> I mean, it would be kind nice. of fun. Hello, Tiger Belly Nation. <laughs> uh, it's George. Reads your comments. Thank you and. Uh, <laughs> Let's stroke our own. Let's like suck our own dicks. dicks. That's that's this is what it's about. <laughs> no, uh, it's about them. It's about the audience. Oh, really? Before <laughs> we go to our uh, social media shout out, whatever. Um, your thoughts on this weekend? Old man BJ Penn fighting the young crazy Yair Rodriguez in Phoenix. Look at my face. Oh, so God. excited. He's gonna die, right? I'm so excited. He's gonna die. Just because he's at Jack uh, Jackson's, he's to, gonna die. To put it out there, BJ Penn was my absolute favorite oh, fighter. Oh, you and your sister love him ever. I mean, when he, Kyle Ono, that fight. That was when the he one. still had all of his hair. And then jumped on the fence and did he yeah. run off? I think he just left. 
right? I mean, just just amazing and so naturally talented too. But I, uh, will I say that I am absolutely excited to see him step into the octagon? Not With really, because I do, I do want him to. I think he's getting older, and I think that he's lost his his luster a little bit. And I think he should always protect his health first. You know, um, um, he's just not somebody that I am like clamoring to watch anymore. But I do give him props beyond props just for being BJ Penn. But it hurts me to see him. In the Who's ring? in the undercard? It's a, it's really weak. When I, does Eric Koch fight? Not on that card. Probably the next one. I don't I don't remember, but we need to watch that one mm-hmm. and support him. So really quick, uh, BJ loses, then retires again. <laughs> or um, Yair. That guy's crazy. Yeah, I don't see BJ winning unless it goes to the ground because his jiu-jitsu obviously is just ingrained in his DNA, I think. There you guys have it. Our very quick MMA minute. So make sure you follow us on Instagram at uh, at Tiger Belly, on Twitter at the Tiger Belly, and email us any questions at the Tiger Belly at gmail dot com. You can follow Kalila on all social media at Calamity K. And I'm sorry for being sick this week. I'll be better next week. And you can follow George at all social media at uh, Voted Best Channel or George underscore Kimmel. And you can uh, f- see uh, more of uh, Bobby store dates at Bobby Lee Live dot com. Everyone, have a good night. Uh- Kalau dapat kata